All right, so today we're going to talk about putting the watercolor down on the page and getting our flower that we have here transferred onto our image. For the most part, we're going to use either a wet on dry, which is dry paper with a wet brush, or we're going to use the wet on wet technique, which is wet paper where you put down either paint or just straight clear water, and then we paint over the top of that. Ideally, that is going to happen when you want to get the colors to blend a little bit more like this. Wet on wet helps to get things to, to blend. It's just a little bit more natural transition from one color to the next. So with this particular flower, uh, it is greens with a little bit of blue green uh, with a little bit of yellow in for the center part. With watercolor in general, you want to start with your lightest color and then you're going to work your way to your darkest colors. Okay? So if you have uh, some part in the middle of the flower that needs to stay light, uh, we can do, there's two things we can do. You can either leave it or you can use this liquid frisket, which basically is a liquid masking tape that you brush that down and then you brush that down and then uh, when you're all done with everything, you rub it away. So that's what I did with this one. So I brushed it down on here to leave that because I knew I wanted that to be a brighter color. So when that was all done, rubbed that off and then went in and painted it with the lighter color. So if you've got the, the violet flower that has the white centers, we can do that. Uh, or anything that needs to be left white or bright, we can do that. What comes off when you rub it off? It's just a little like rubber cement oh, type yeah. thing. So we always want to use the appropriate brush for the size of the area that we're working with. So for starters, I'm just going to get some water in the colors that I'm going to be using to soften them up. Um, the colors that we're using here are what's called a semi-moist. So they have a little bit of moisture and it doesn't take a lot of water to get stuff rolling. And with watercolor in general, it doesn't take a whole lot. Okay, a little bit of paint, so like with these, there's not a whole lot left in them. But this little bit of green that I've got down here in the corner, I could use that and that realistically would be enough to paint this whole thing. So watercolor is very concentrated. So it doesn't take a lot of paint. And actually with this brand, if you get too much paint on there, it will look shiny. And while we don't want that to happen. All right. So with this, I'm going, I've got my flower drawn out on here. Okay. If and you want your drawing to be really light, especially if you're using one of the lighter colors like the daisies uh, where you've got all yellow to work with, because the yellow paint is not going to cover up uh, that pencil line with this. I could probably get away with it because the green will cover up to a certain extent. Like this line that I have up here is probably a little bit dark for that. Okay. And the, the majority of this is drawn very light. So where you can barely see it and that's the way we want it to be. So this, I'm, when I get to it, I'm going to go in and erase that. <coughs> with our brushes, we've got different sizes and they're numbered. So this one is a number eight. You can see right here. This one is a number four. You can kind of see it still. The larger the number, the larger the brush. So this guy here is a number 10. So you can see they're all different sizes. When you get into the flats, they go by uh, size as well. So this is a two. And then they go same thing. So large, larger the number, the larger the size. So I'm going to start out with this little guy here, which is a one and I'm going to start with my uh, my center part here and see just this little bit that I've got on here that's a lot all right now with watercolor you need to be careful when you put it down at first because if you have colors that are still wet they will run together so if you're going to I'm starting out in the center part here to where I'm going to start and I'm just going to pull out some lines and have these kind of go in all different directions because that's how they look on the page. And I could probably use a little bit smaller brush for this if I wanted to. But I'm just going to drag these out <coughs> so that way I have a center section here. So I'm going to let that sit for a little bit and I'm going to come up to the top parts to paint those. Okay. So I'm going to look at my look at my flower. So I've got some lighter sections up towards the top, and let's turn this. So that's over towards this side. So 
I can use a little bit of yellow. I can use some green or some yellow green with this. I can always come in and mix the two in a little bit to get that lighter. So the way that I'm doing this now is what we call a wet on dry. It's where we got a wet brush on dry paper. And we're taking these two sections. And we're trying to get these to blend together. And I'm going to go right up to that edge where I want it to be. So that way I can get that color to transition just a little bit. And I can always come in with just a clean brush to try and get that transition to be a little bit more. So a clean brush with some just straight water, I can go into that and uh, get that color to move around a little bit. I just re-dipped and came back in. You see how my color is significantly darker? So I can stretch this around and use the, the water that's in there to uh, get that to stretch out. So this is kind of dry where I was. The paper that we're using is a watercolor paper. That's what's considered a hundred pound paper. So it's really thick. It's significantly stiffer than regular paper that we did our thumbnails on. So you can see the difference as far as the thickness of it. Okay. So this is the one piece that you get. So be very cautious and draw light. Okay. Paper does have two sides. Remember that. So if you messed your drawing up on one side, flip it over. Yes, yeah, so you get two chances but one piece of paper. So you want to be very careful if you've got light areas here that I'm trying to work around because a darker color will cover up a lighter color, but a lighter color generally will not cover up a darker color. So I've got this in here. Now I've got a pretty good base layer in as far as a color goes, but I know I've got some lines in here that are a little bit darker that I want to get and I can come back in here and try and lighten this up a little bit it's probably not going to happen so I'm going to come in with some blue or some blue green or some turquoise here just a little bit and go a little bit darker down here towards the base because that's got some darkness to it and that's almost too dark but this will work and then I've got little veins that run out. And all of the flowers, for the most part, have some type of texture to it because it's got some curvature in some way. So we want to have these lines come out. And that's going to help create that shape. Uh, a lot of times, one side of your flower will be a little bit darker than the other just because you know, that helps to show the curve of it. Um, but not all of the time. So you just want to get this water on here and get the paint on here, push it around so that way you can you get the values that you want. Whether it's a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, it all depends on what it is that you're shooting for. Okay. So I'm gonna have this side's gonna be a little bit darker and then come back in with just a little bit more of this blue. Get that darkened up. And get that kind of stretched out a little bit so that way we get a nice even transition and where I've got this light that's a little bit too much of a straight line for me so I'll come in with just some straight water and just kind of push this up around a little bit to kind of eliminate that real hard edge because realistically like this there aren't any real hard edges so I'm just going to take this with some just clean water push that around get that to blend a little bit and let this set up for a little bit and I'll come in and get a little bit more of that texture or the the lines in there all right so I would do one petal at a time and then if you have a flower that has multiple petals where you've got a lot going on so if I was painting this one I would do this petal skip this one go to the next one because if this is wet and you try and paint right next to it, then the, you have run the chance of the two petals coming together. Okay, And we want those to be different. So when you have two petals together that are close to the same color, you want there to be some type of separation, whether it be one petal being a little bit darker or you have the, the shadow cast on it. So there's going to be 
some variation to it. It might be very subtle like that. It might be a little more drastic like this. So it just kind of depends on how you want that to be. All right, so questions? Stop. That was really good. So I'll talk about backgrounds real quick because by now you should be to the point where some of you are to the point where you're ready to put that down, some of you are not. Uh, that's fine. Uh, when you go to do the background, what you want to do is pick a color that's going to complement the colors that you already have down. So if you have a light color, I can said this the other day, if you have a, a warm color, then pick a cool color. If you have a cool color like I have, pick something that's warm or pick its complement. So I've got green. What I'm going to use is this magenta color. It's right here, and because I've got a lot of these from using the, at the end of these, I'm just going to use these up because, like I said, watercolor is very concentrated, so it does not take a whole lot to use. Now, you've got options for your background uh, as far as how it looks. Now, what I'm going to do for this particular one is in around where this flower starts, uh, I'm going to go real heavy or make it darker, and then as it comes out, uh, it's going to fade out a little bit lighter. I've also got a border that I measured. It's one inch around all the sides here uh, Just to give it a little bit of a little bit different look. So I'm going to take this and go somewhat heavy <coughs> Towards the center of this and then as it comes out then I want to Go lighter now. I've got a real tight area like this. Give me a small brush right there. So what I'm going to do is take a little tiny brush for when I get in towards the very centers of this. So I'm gonna, just going to use this paint up out here and try not to get stuff overlapped on the green. If you get a little bit on there it's not really an issue but we don't want it to be too much. Set this aside. <clears throat> get the little tiny brush in here and just take my time with it and work real patiently get that cleaned up uh, realistically if I wanted to I could go through with this little brush and just kind of outline all of these areas right in the center part which I think I'll actually do just to get those done and then work my way out from there so by the time I get down to the very bottom it's going to be a very light uh, tint of this because I'm adding water to it so it's going to lighten up as I go down. Okay. That's just one way you can do it if you wanted to create a pattern with how your brush strokes get laid down on the page then you can do that or if you wanted to use a different color to have like a dark violet and then fade to blue you can do something like that but it doesn't always just have to be a flat wash where you have a flat plane of color. It can have some variation to it. And depending on how your flower looks, that little bit of variation might actually help out a little bit. So I've got that nice and tight in there, and then I'll use the larger brush to kind of fan out from here. 